Hello and welcome to another episode here on Let's Talk About It. If you guys are still here and you followed from the last episode, thank you so much. If we probably lost some of you, well, you know, then you probably don't get the whole point of this. And that is, you know, sharing opinions. There is no politicalness to this, or at least we try not to, because we want to make sure that this show is for everybody. Um, And with that in mind, of course, to introduce ourselves, uh, my name is Todd. I'll go ahead and shoot it over to our host. Hey, what's up? This is Ro. Hey, like you said, if, if we lost you, um, bring your ass back. We need you. <laughs> and we can't forget about the other guy. <laughs> I am Kevin. Uh, yeah, it just come along for the ride. We're just yeah, here talking. Right. We're, we're having the same questions and answers and thoughts and processes as you guys, right? So we're just trying to talk about it. Hey, see what I did there? <laughs> Let's talk about it, baby. Let's talk about it. All right, my friend. What do you have for us today, Ro? All right, so uh, question of the day was why do men, why is it more acceptable for men to cheat than it is for women? Oh. Mm. okay and to add on to that we can we can actually talk about uh monogamy uh and poly okay okay now who says it's more acceptable for men to cheat where are we getting this information it it was it was actually a, a woman that um that i work with um she posed the question she was like um why is it more acceptable for men to cheat um and it's not it's looked down upon for women to cheat personally i disagree because cheating is cheating i mean if you get if you get caught cheating i think um the same repercussions are available or are out there but that's just that's just my thought on it I guess I've never thought about it being acceptable or not acceptable one way or the other. Uh, that's never been on my scope, I guess. I've never heard any being, anybody ever saying that, oh, if a guy cheats, it's okay. But if a woman cheats, it's not okay. I've never heard <laughs> right. that before. Well, no, I guess, yeah. but I don't, I don't think, so I think it was more like, um, uh, we're, we're more Ex- uh, expected, prone, like, prone, yeah, yeah, expected and prone to cheating. Okay. Than, than women are but i mean i can tell you from my past relationships that is a lie like maury says um when it comes to cheating <laughs> the lie detector determined that was a lie right um but i disagree 100 percent. like um cheating is cheating unless if you talk about it right um or what you decide to do um after somebody cheats because the option to leave is always out is always there so it depends on and honestly i would uh, disagree as well just because of the fact that you know just like you and just like both of you guys is cheating is cheating like no matter where you come along with that i know when um you and I were roommates. Uh, there was a situation at um, a club that we went to called Falafel. Um, and <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it, it was a restaurant that sold falafels that they would have a club where a DJ come in and be a whole bunch of dancing. Oh my God, so I was dating, I was dating somebody at the time. And the road probably does remember this whole situation. And <laughs> you know, uh, the, I talked to her and basically said, Hey, are you coming out? And cause Rose like, Hey, you know, is she coming out, coming out? And like, I don't know. I'll go ahead and ask her, ask her because, you know, I don't really feel that like I want to go out. Like, I think I might just stay here because she was part of the college program. Like, okay, no big deal. Whatever. Like Ro and I will go out. And I, I think it might've been like our second or third time going out there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was dancing with other women. Yes. Um, I ended up dancing with uh, somebody who uh, is now who used to be on uh, the boat, something about the boat, like, uh, oh, under deck or something like that, below deck. That's it. The the show below deck. She Mm -hmm. was a actual um, person who ended up being on there eventually. Um, 
but like that night um you know i kissed someone who wasn't who i was dating at the time i i mean i did and then later throughout the night you know i was dancing with you know other but that's women. not cheating though that's not cheating. Uh, and that's why women think it's more acceptable for us to cheat. It's because of wait, that wait, answer wait, right wait, there. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. There it Hold is. on. Wait, wait. He didn't say he was in a relationship. But but I was dating though. So so here's the thing though. When when you date somebody, oh. like the, the mm-hmm. old the old rule, like when you date somebody is you're dating and you're being in a relationship, you're dating somebody. So then that way they can be on the verge of marriage. You're dating somebody with an idea and concept of being married to that person. So okay. well, hold on, hold on. so as the night, night progresses, right, dancing with other girls, I, I finish dancing with one and I feel a tap on my shoulder. And I was like, okay. It and was I turned, her, wasn't it? I turned around oh. and it was her. And Ooh. at that moment, I, I was, was like, was Shh. that it? Wait, was that it for that? Yeah, you were. You were over uh, smoking like a, a hookah or something like that. So, okay, so I, I, I did not approve this message. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I turned I mean, around. This conduct. I I turned around and there she was. She was right behind me. And instant, not only regret, but fear came over. Like, oh shit she she knows what i did but that conversation never came up later that that's the whole thing so she may have seen it she may not have seen it um i don't know how long she was there either but ever since that day like i was like no not gonna happen again because i don't like the feeling or that feeling of fear like are they going to find out are they not going to find out you know it's wrong in general just in general it's wrong like even before that i was cheating on uh i was cheated on because that's why ro and i became roommates was because he was taking me to clubs and stuff like that trying to get my um try to get my uh, charisma back trying because i was at that self-esteem that self-esteem because i was a very very low point so wait was i a good roommate or a bad roommate kid the way that you're making it sound was like i was the one getting you out of these well, that scene you just mentioned that you weren't there for. And I mentioned yeah. on how, you know, before that I was cheated on. And that's the whole point of like, you know, I was in a relationship with a girl at the time, very heavily in that relationship or thought it was a relationship. It just took the the, the amount of times that I was told that it wasn't, but then it was, but then it wasn't, but then it was. So it was real like mind messing for me. And that's Wait, when is it is it the one that worked at that um uh, what was it uh, I'm not gonna say her name I'm no, not no, gonna no, say no, her name place. we had went over there and then like that it was like the expense the most expensive um hotel in Disney yes and then um yeah but that yep. porn stop was there too <laughs> uh oh you're talking <laughs> you're talking about uh the the time I met um uh what's her face from girls next door right that's who you were talking about because i didn't meet i didn't meet the uh one of the girls from girls next door when i worked there yeah oh was was that that cat house uh show or whatever sure something like that with the owner being uh his first name is hugh yeah. yes okay yeah. Oh, that's what it was yeah yeah, yeah 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 yeah. i'm sorry guys but i don't think you're talking enough about the <laughs> stereotypes of the falafel nightclub and row in the corner just probably mm. killing killing a falafel hitting the hookah and just <laughs> just partying out i don't think we're talking I, enough about wait, that I, but wait i I was a smooth guy, you feel me? Like smoother, smoother than Duce with no ice, you feel me? Like, <laughs> uh, but I mean, so the reason why I said um, they were it wasn't bad because they weren't dating, right? Is because I guess different people view dating differently, right? Because if I say dating, we're going out on dates. We're just, you know, we're just hanging out. This is like something casual. Like we're dating, we're hanging out, we're going, we're going to places. Whether um, we want a relationship in the future, right? So that's my term for dating. So 
other people use dating as in like for a relationship. So that's why I said uh, you guys were just dating. You guys weren't, you know, in a full relationship. So if he meant dating as they were in a relationship, mm-hmm. and I mean, yeah, you had red flags anyway, because if she's talking about one time, you guys are in a relationship and the guy, uh, the other time you're not in a relationship. Um, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry to say. Well, let me clear that up real quick, because it, it, if I didn't describe that correctly, I apologize. What I meant was before the falafel incident, I was seeing another girl. So before her, it was during the college program. And that's when I was seeing um, that individual. I won't say her name, but I believe it happened between the autumn and fall period. And of course, that's when you came through. And uh, what I'm saying is, is seeing is seeing a relationship or is seeing like you guys are just hanging out, going on dates and stuff like that. So the one before the falafel incident uh mm-hmm. the girl I was dating before that um I wanted it to be more of like dating in a relationship type situation it there it, it, was, want that. It, it was very messy and it was very mixed signals and mixed communication as well um the girl I was dating after her where mm-hmm. you were helping get my self-esteem back that's the one that I um ended up dancing with other girls ended up kissing another girl and she was the one that I, to, in my opinion, I cheated on because I did acts that you shouldn't do when you're dating. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I do understand where you're coming from because there are uh, individuals who do see dating as, you know, okay, well, you're dating this person, you're dating that person. You're kind of like, I guess, going within the pool of possibilities. And then you're mm-hmm. kind of playing to the point of, okay, well, you know, I don't see my me being in a relationship with this person as I do with these other two people. Okay. I don't see myself being in a relationship with this person now, though we've been dating for like a couple of months, I see more of being in a relationship with this individual. And then that's when they choose to be in a relationship, boyfriend and girlfriend, and then carry on me personally, I guess, I mean, you can call me old school. When I go into dating, um, I date one person at a time with a mindset of marriage um so so i guess so i guess that's why i felt bad and was like you know i'm i'm not going to do this again because i didn't like the feeling of fear of the fact that you know i betrayed somebody of like so many emotions happening i was like no i I don't like it so so the thing is like (laughs) and this can come back on me which i don't mind um (laughs) I, I like to stir the fuck the pot, like, and, like, so, the thing is, like, I think a lot of men, um, we have the, and I, I can say I used to be the same way, like, we can't read time, right, we don't understand, so, like, um, if we go out to, and I, and it happens with women, too, like, we don't understand when somebody wants a like just a playtime or when somebody wants a relationship you see what i'm saying so like we we automatically like for us yes we're chasing something so and we're so into that that mindset of like i'm chasing this person like i want this person to be my person but um Maybe that person is not your person. Maybe that person is just trying to have a good time. You see what I'm saying? And so that kind of puts us in a situation where it's like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get in a, I really like this person. I want to be in a relationship with this person, but their mindset is not there. Their mindset is like, Hey, like, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to have a great time and I'm just trying to, you know, do what I do. Like, you know, go to parties and like do this and that so i think that's a that's a a problem that a lot of people have like we get so tied into i want to be in a relationship with this person not knowing their true intentions their true intentions may be like oh no i'm just i'm just trying to have a good fucking time so there's a communication barrier is what you're saying yeah so you need to speak up and 
tell, hey, this is what I'm looking for. And maybe that is going to send this person, spare this person some heartache or this person some heartache one way or the other. And and I've 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 had a I've had to learn that like over the years, like just like because I was a very super like I wanted somebody I wanted uh, a relationship like if I met you and I talked to you like like let's get into like let's make this work I'm just trying to make that next move and never really ask right um, like hey what do you want out of this like. Uh, do you want a relationship? Like, is this is this just for fun? Are we are we playing the field? Are we you know are we playing the game? Like, you know, I've had to learn that. Like, so now my first question is like, hey, what are you looking for? Like, you know, oh, you just trying to play the field? All right, shoot. Well, I guess we playing on the same court, right? <laughs> or like, <laughs> right? Or or if it, if if you want something serious and that's not what I'm looking for, I'll let you know right off the gate. Like, hey, like. That's not what I'm looking for, or we're on the same page, same page of things. Fair yeah. enough. I mean, yeah, but um, was, uh, it, the the dating game nowadays are just so weird. Like, I, I'm happy I met my wife. I'm happy that uh, you know you we dated. Say that. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say if I didn't mean it. So I'm happy I met her, you know, I'm happy, you know, being married to her with, you know, the kids and stuff like that, because I mean, if I had that much hard of a time during the falafel incident, I couldn't imagine being out in the dating world now. I I actually remember what, um, what place you're talking about too. It was like close to Applebee's where, where we were, uh, where we got fired from. Yeah. Yeah, basically. You guys, you guys have this history, and I, I really want to dig into that someday. I really do. I really, you guys, you guys got something going on here, and I'm interested. Hey, I'm all hey. for it. For the time that he saved me when I was uh, passed out drunk in my car. Drunk as hell, you hear me? Well, you know, I'll just go ahead and say it. So I was married. I married at uh, at 19 years old. Um, I was, yeah, yeah. I was one of those guys, you know, similar. You, you know. didn't get divorced, did you? I, I did. Yeah, I did. Oh. Yeah, and I got married. I got divorced. Were you in the military? Three or four years later. No, see, that's the thing. As I was all signed up, ready to go, so on and so forth. I didn't swear in yet. And mm-hmm. this girl did not want me to go. And I ended up not going. So then I went to school, which wasn't a bad thing. I became a firefighter and I was doing my thing. But... uh yeah, I like that immediately. Were you in the military? Because that is a stereotype that is straightforward <laughs> right there. And that's very fact. No, it's... Get me a Dependa, figure it out, you know. <laughs> Sheesh. Um, but she ended up cheating on me about two or three years into the relationship. And we weren't just ha- we weren't happy at all. I mean, uh, we, di- we were just kids when we got married. And, um, you know, I didn't know who I was and she didn't know who she was um but she cheated on me and i'll never forget how that made me feel you know it's terrible but you know Mm -hmm. we're talking about men cheating on women women cheat on men they just don't get caught that that, that's i'm I'm just gonna throw it out there they 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 are a lot more sly than we are because we're thinking with something completely different than they are i mean i i guess i was lucky because like everyone who did cheat on me i found out some way somehow so like um i guess it's a, you know, I feel kind of lucky about it, but I was reading this, um, like, uh, it's like a study from that Forbes magazine pulled up and it it said, uh, studies routinely find that men are more likely to cheat on partners, commit sexual misconduct and act recklessly when it comes to having sex. Why have men evolved to be more sexually impulsive and can we learn to change our ways mm. so that, it's interesting because i don't think you know studies show studies show this but somebody has to admit to what they're doing correct yeah to, to for these studies to work or for these studies to come out i don't yeah. think it's necessarily that women women cheat more than men or men cheat more than women i think that men are more likely to express that they've cheated mm-hmm. more than a woman um, well, te- because of I mean, standards 
Yeah, to add on to that, it says while 20 per- 20% of men have reported having extramarital sex, only 13% of women report sharing this experience. Um, so doing the same thing. And much of this behavior on both sides likely goes unreported. Women are also doubled as they likely to experience some form of sexual violence over the course of their life. Such, um, yeah, re- yeah. I mean, but you know, I don't want to get too deep into that. Um, but that that's a that's a whole another topic in itself. Um, evolution, biology, and the uh, uh, paltitude, boys will be boys. Do not excuse poor and inconsiderate decision making. But there are biological factors as well as numerous cultural factors that make that may make men more likely than women to act upon their sexual impulses. A stronger understanding of the origins behind this gender difference can help us address and prevent such shortcomings as our society continues to change. So for me, it's like um, the whole system when it comes to monogamy, right? Um, Monogamy is religion and um, society-based, in my opinion, right? Um, Actually, I would say it's kind of more of a fact um, because if you look back, right, if you're religious and you look back into the Bible or whatever, or um, what uh, Romans, Greeks, you know, whatever you want to call it, uh, whatever era we're talking about, right, they had, the men had multiple wives. Right, whether it be king, uh, king, whatever, whatever his face is, they had multiple wives, either wives, concubines, or whatever. Right, so monogamy wasn't created by men because men are the uh, source of reproduction, right? And then women are the you know mothering nature and you know building, building the household. Uh, whatever the manners reproduce, right? Not, not, you know, trying to make everything like, because um, we live in a new day and age. Like, I get in trouble for saying this, but that's that's just me going on historical facts. Um, well, I mean, if you're looking at historical factors too, it's exactly that. Because if you look at, you know, a lot of the cults, for an example, mm-hmm. a lot of the cults they say like they're in a religious aspect, but if you do research on them, there is nothing but cheating, sleeping with multiple people within the con, within the. I, I forgot the technical t- term. I was going to say convent, but that's for nuns. So it's definitely not mm-hmm. that. Um, but within but like it- the compound area, like a, a lot of the stuff, in, in my opinion. Um, it used to be a very much like a a Christian basis with the whole, you know, only one wife marriage, stuff like that. But it also doesn't have to be Christian values either, because for an example, like um, Kevin, for an example, I'll just use him. Like I met his wife. Uh, We met like one day in Orlando and then hit it off. Right. And from my understanding is, Kevin's wife is great and I don't ever see you know him cheating on her and I only say that because of the fact that you know he seems like a very stand-up guy he's very you know well liked like that type of situation so I don't know your or his like when I say your I mean you Kevin uh your you know religious background or anything like that but there are other guys out there that you know they don't I guess what I'm trying to say is you don't really need the Christianity values as it is like also moral values too. And the whole thing of treat others the way that you want to be treated. I'll clear that up. I'm non-religious. So that falls right into your point right there. Um, yeah. and, and a lot of people say morals come from religion. Well, that's not true. You can have your own morals without religion. You, you, you have the thought process up here you know um so yeah i'm non-religious and that has nothing to do with marriage i just enjoy having my partner my person that i can come home to every day um that shares the same you know the same values Mm -hmm. and that i that we want to achieve in our life together you know Mm -hmm. so and and i I mean i mean it's it's if you think about it really it's it stems back from that right 
it, it stems back from society and and religion. Whether we decide to, you know, go off like the path or whatever, it kind of stems back to to that when it comes to monogamy, right? And then like you can say it's more primitive, um, you know, um, with the poly polyamorous um, relationships, but that's that's where the start was, right? Mm-hmm. The whole yeah, uh, people can say yeah, you know, God made Adam and Eve, not Adam, you know, Susan Eve, you know, and like fifteen other wives. But if you go, if you go, de- if you want to go deep into it, like it was, it was the thing. So was monogamy. Then that can just be a whole another, you know, topic in itself. But that's that's not where we're trying to go. But like being poly or being monogamous that should be a communication thing that should be like something that you guys discuss like from the the beginning yeah it's and i i believe i don't know it's if it's because we from you know childhood we we've seen monogamy growing up right and like you know you go through middle school high school you're like oh like i want her to be my girlfriend whatever and then like now as an adult i see more um polygamous relationships um more open relationships and stuff like that i don't know if it's because we I think society too grown up yeah but society's oh. always society's always changing but it's not it's not only society based because things that you know history comes back around full circle right so they, you're seeing more and more polygamous relationships. You're seeing more and more open relationships. Uh, like when you were growing up, you didn't see mainly of that. Or like if you heard about that, they're like, "Oh, that person is a bad person because they have they have multiple wives or they sleep with multiple people," which is not which is not necessarily the case, right? It's just that's the lifestyle that they want to live, and we let them live that that lifestyle right and there's nothing wrong with that because it doesn't affect us whatsoever and i think you even go back further and just look at nature as a whole Mm -hmm. you have some species of animals creatures whatever that Mm -hmm. mate for life and then you have others that aren't the same way right they they, they, so uh, we as a human race you know we have the ability to think on our own for what we want to do i suppose Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It's, 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 it's an interesting fact. And if you guys wouldn't mind, I would like to read a small article. Oh, no, quick. no, go ahead. Is this go a ahead. penguin story? This is a penguin story. Yeah, right? penguin story. And, I, and it, it kind of goes back to the, the men cheating on women or men with a higher sexual drive, right? Whatever that may or may not be, whether it's true for some or false for others. It just, it's a very interesting story that I wanted to go about. Um, there was uh, uh, an expedition called the Scott Antarctic Expedition from uh, 1910 to 1913. Um, they were out there observing the uh, Delhi penguins. Um, a gentleman, a researcher by the name of George Murray Levick, um, he's a scientist, uh, went out there and looked at these penguins through an entire breeding season to, because no one's ever done it and they were trying to get information. Uh, what they were finding was during this time, he witnessed males having sex with other males, also with dead females, including several that had died from the previous season um, that were just out there in the cold. Um, he also saw them sexually coerce females and chicks and occasionally kill them if they weren't, uh, for lack of a better term, giving it up. Um uh, Levick blamed this astonishing depravity on hooligan males and wrote down his observations in Greek so that only educated gentlemen would be able to understand the horrors that he witnessed. He, ex- he essentially covered all this up because of the things that he saw were so disgusting. He did not want other people to read about it, which I found was very interesting. Um, but he went back out two years later and it was the same thing over and over again. Males constantly coercing females raping doing all kinds of other things so why is that you know they don't know why but it's interesting that we have this it seems that there 
that males are constantly getting the short end of the stick, but sometimes we deserve it. These penguins fucking deserve it. Let's be honest. <laughs> and that, so, that's... It gives you a little look into like the male psychology when it doesn't even, because we hear about, you know, these constant terrible things that are happening to females by males. Um, not that it doesn't happen to males by females because it does. And it goes unreported right. just just as much as it goes unreported for the males versus the females. Mm -hmm. um, and then that, there's a whole societal issue when it comes to that, when males don't speak up, right? So, uh, yeah. It goes both ways. Um, but I just found that kind of crazy and interesting. And ugh, yeah, so, you know? so what, I mean, what, 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 oh, uh, go no, ahead, Tom. No, dude, you, you go first. You were talking first. Uh, so, like, uh, to add on to what he was saying, like, continuing on um that forward that forbes uh you know whole insight and it was like uh for for instance the sexual pursuit area of a man's brain of men's brain um may be up to 2.5 times larger than that of a female men report masturbating over twice as frequent frequently as women on average with their primary motivation being insufficient sex Upon reaching puberty, men begin to produce 25 times more test testosterone, the male sex, uh, sex hormone, than females. Although this is obviously not true of all men, on average, a man's brain is evolutionary, evolutionarily more primed towards sexual conquest. Spread in our seed, essentially. And, Lame. Yeah. And um, to to add on to that, it was like the uh, part of that um, that study was it was called the race of of the sperm. Our an our ancient uh, poly polynamorous male ancestors thus had to compete with each other to father the most children. Once co um, consequences consequence of this was sperm competition wherein males evolved larger and specifically shaped testicles. Um, our, <laughs> ours are the largest of all the apes in order to ensure that there was sperm where the ones that made it. Men evol also evolved to produce more sperm leading, to, leading us to develop uh, relatively large uh, tests since the birth of monogamy and humans. However, our test may have somewhat shrunk because we were, we weren't made to be, we weren't made to be monogamous. So us being monogamous ha uh, throughout evolutionary times have made our test smaller than are you trying you know, to say test are you saying testes yes oh, okay i'm it sorry is, i was like what i was like What's no no it, i'm no, sorry no, it says it says test i'm i'm reading it straight straight from oh okay. uh, yeah from the forbes forbes magazine it says test on there but so throughout uh throughout you know uh time right our normal sizes have shrunk because we've became monogamous because so, that evolutionary urge to spread has gone down is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. That's it. That's very interesting. Exactly. So, so if we were, you know, a couple year, a couple centuries back, you know, there would be no, um, who you're saying small. you're saying my life would love me more if we were a couple <laughs> centuries back. Is that what you're saying? There, hey, there, there'd be no more four inches. In All that. right. <laughs> I'm just thinking of the child support back then. There was no child support. I don't think no, kind of court. No, was I a know. Thing back then. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but I'm saying like if it was though. I don't know. You just send over a couple of chickens and call it good. Hey. I think at that time. <laughs> hey, my my grandpa had 23 or 26 kids, so. Granted, uh, that it was a rolling stone. You hear me? <laughs> wow. I, I just have to say, though, with that penguin story, yeah. um, that's not what I was expecting. Mm -hmm. 
I was well, expecting. That, that's not. That's not what I was expecting either. No. I'm not even gonna lie to you. No, you and didn't I think kinda... he was gonna have sexual intercourse with a penguin, did you? Please tell oh, me no, you weren't no, thinking. No, God. <laughs> no, 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 no. Dang, like the uh, the whole like dead at like with the season oh, prior that was dead. Yeah, like having that, that, sex with dead people. Yeah, yeah like no. I was super excited to hear about a penguin story because it had to deal with penguins. It got and then depressing that took, real quick, didn't it? It took really, a downward really. spiral. Fast. And that's why they had he had buried the story, and then it finally became unburied. And people are like, "Oh shit, this is crazy." Yeah, it's. It's gross, but I mean, it, it makes you think about it a little bit. Like, okay, so what's wrong with us? <laughs> what is wrong with us? I think I with, know. I think to like uh, individuals who like monogamy, um, it also, you know, it helps with a more steady family unit, um, more firm family unit. It also helps with, you know, you don't have to worry about STDs, for an example, um because you're with that one individual unless if that individual is cheating um but you don't really have to worry about stds at that point um it's more mm. again unless if they're cheating but also with like um you you become like more of a friend you become more of it's a stronger bondmanship where of course it's not only understanding an individual but it's also um knowing that you can't live without that person and it, it, it just becomes more it feels more whole i guess if that makes sense um which again if and if anybody just wants to sleep around i mean obviously that's their prerogative they can do whatever they want they're adults like go ahead have fun what do i care but it, it's just a wide difference between the two I see Will laughing. <laughs> so, like, okay, so, you know, you're going to have a polyamorous relationship, right? Um, and it'd be three or four of you. Like, there's this guy that, that married to, um, he's married to one, and then they have, like, a third. And it's just them three. So, like, um, I think a misconception when it comes to polyamorous, uh, polyamorous relationships, like, it's just anybody and everybody. Like, there's actual rules to everything, right? Like, there's rules to open relationships. Um, uh, there's rules to, you know, that type of lifestyle. There's ru- rules to swingers. Like, there's rules to all that. Like, but that's something that has to be discussed, right? And, like, and that community is is a great community. I know people within that community, and they're 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 great people and but they have like certain rules it's not like oh shit we're going to the club like we're gonna pick up so and so and like we're gonna take them back and we're gonna do we're gonna do it unprotected right it's not it's not that way so like it's just like being another you have uh so to so to say like so to speak you can be the same way you're single right you want to use protection that's the same way that they move as well like they want to have somebody that's if somebody's in that lifestyle um they want to be protected either you show paperwork that you don't have any stds or anything like that or like you move along or we're using protection right because it is an open lifestyle but um to think that they're not protecting themselves is is out out of the out out of the question so like they do protect themselves like because i have countless of friends that are swingers that are in um polyamorous relationships that are in open relationships and they protect themselves really well so it's it's that being said like it's not like std central or like you know no i i I get it but that that's just something i wanted to clear up like it's not it's not just like five uh point point the gun so to speak shoot fire and forget so like yeah there's (laughs) yeah no but there's there's there there's rules to it and like you know shout out to all my you know all my friends um or anybody I know, whether it be monogamy or um, 
poly swinger life, you know, shout out to them because at, at least they're protecting themselves and they're trying to make the best of, you know, their lifestyle. Studio 54, anybody? <laughs> <laughs> I think when it comes to it, though, really, and I'm just going to I'm gonna lay this out here as blatantly as possible, it's none of our mm-hmm. fucking business, truly, what somebody yeah. else does. They're exactly. not hurting me. Mm-hmm. I, you know what? I, it's the societal stigma of that's just how it's supposed to be. Well, is yeah. it? You know, you is look at really? nature, you yeah, look at exactly. us. We're animals. They're, you know there's animals in nature it is what it is but again mm-hmm. it doesn't affect us just because it offends you doesn't mean it affects you and but but, but the thing is why why should it offend offend you if it has I nothing agree. to do with you i agree with you but like, i mean have you looked at the state of our world today <laughs> so, yeah like <laughs> you know like like this the whole thing if a tree falls in the forest like are you you know are you and you're not around to hear it does it make a sound like so if it's not bothering you why the heck are you mad about that? Or, you know, why are you making such a big deal about it? I think a lot of people just have their uh, viewpoints and they're kind of just strong on those viewpoints to the point where yeah. it's like, they they don't, they feel like everybody should live this way, which that's not how everybody lives. Um, and, you know, that, that that's fine because, again, just going back to how, you know, not judge those who need to be judged but it's like okay well i'm not going to judge the individuals who do that just like i'm not going to judge the person who has you know strong feelings towards not wanting to do that and think that people shouldn't do that okay like i i could care less if you really think that way but really what how is it affecting you it's not really affecting you in that manner it's just like for example the tv shows and the movies and stuff like that like oh i can't believe they did such and such on this you know awards award ceremony okay like it's kind of understandable but it's kind of not understandable just because of the fact that okay uh the award shows mtv you know that shit's gonna go down because it's mtv uh but if you think of the oscars you don't expect like cardi b and um megan stallion doing the going against each other like you don't think of that during the oscars though oscars have or other ceremonies have had that and that because it's supposed to be more of a family-friendly situation Uh, but you're talking about will smith and jada well let's put it this way jada is a very toxic individual oh a hundred percent a hundred percent i think she's a wholesome woman i think she's wholesome hey hey, calm down before will smith comes through the door but will smith hey will smith and Denzel Washington are one of my favorite um, fucking actors. I can quote Fresh Prince word for word every episode, all the seasons. Like I've watched it eight times completely, you know. But, but I understand what you're saying. Yeah, because because it goes to the bottom line. Now, okay, well, you expect that with MTV, so just don't watch it. Okay, you expect that like kind of a little bit with the VMAs. Okay, so don't watch it. The Oscars is something like that happened. Okay, that's understandable because it's supposed to be pertained to like more of a family friendly thing. Mm -hmm. So I I think that's also where the characteristics go to is like a lot of people believe one set point and feel like a lot of people should live that way, though that's not how society and people are. But they just take it too personal. Like if that's an issue, then just don't. Okay, so don't talk to that person again. Or if you do, then expect that from that person and just just live your life the way that you want it. It's not you're not part of that group, so why does it matter? So um in a relationship, right? Why do people why do people cheat? Right? If they decide to be monogamous, why do people cheat? I suppose it could be a multitude of things. Unhappy of it is. sexual mm-hmm. desires uh boredom I, i'm sure it's on there somewhere kink uh, shaming sure you said <laughs> what <laughs> K- uh, kink shaming kink shaming <laughs> yeah oh geez <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> well well the most the most uh the most that came up like of the answers that came up anger like oh, people revenge yeah. yes mm. um falling out of love opportunity commitment issues like, I don't know why you're in a relationship with the acumen issues, but that's here or there. Unmet needs, 
desire, variety, self-esteem, moving forward, takeaway. Discovering a partner has cheated on you can be devastating. You might feel hurt, angry, sad, or even physically sick, but above all, you might be wondering why. A 2017 study, uh, study trusted source published in the Journal of Sex Research set out to explore this very topic. The study used an online survey to ask 495 people who have cheated in a romant romantic relationship about the reason uh, for their infidelity. Part uh, participants included 259 women, 213 men, and 23 people who did not state their gender. They were mostly heterosexual with 87.9%. Um, mostly young adults, average age was 20 years old. Um, not necessarily in a relationship. Only 51.8% reported in being in some type of romantic relationship. The study identified eight um, key motivating factors that contribute to uh, infidelity. Of course, these factors don't explain every cause of cheating, but they do offer a help, uh, helpful framework for a better understanding on why people cheat. Um, these were these were the um, factors: anger or revenge, like you said, right? People sometimes cheat out of anger or desire to get revenge. Um, you probably found out that some um, somebody you're with cheated, and you want to get up, get them back. Um, falling out of love, the um, exhilarating feeling of falling. In, I don't know why they use that word. Like, why is that exhilarating? Falling out of love. No, falling out of love should not be exhilarating. I feel like that's a typo. I think they yeah. meant to say falling in love is exhilarating because everybody remembers their. Oh first. wait, okay, it's... okay. So I cut it short. You're you're absolutely right. Okay. The exhilarating feeling of falling in love with someone generally does doesn't last forever. When you first fall in love with somebody, you might experience passion, excitement, and rushes, rushes of dopamine from simply getting a text from them. But the intensity of these feelings usually fade over time. Sure, stable, lasting love exists, but those first date butterflies will only take you so far. So doing what they've done in the beginning changes. So if you're dating somebody, and you guys are going out on dates and doing this and that, and it it changes, then you begin to fall out of love. Uh, <laughs> I was just gonna say, like, um, in, you know, I think another issue is the fact that going into like falling in and out of love, it's a lot of individuals don't understand like the what's the difference between, and I had to get this explained to me too. Um, before I met my wife is the fact that the puppy dog stage doesn't last. And I always had an issue of where, you know, after a year, year and a half, like that would go away. And then it wouldn't be, I don't want to say exciting, but there's a different feeling that comes after that. So you had, you had a year, a year and a half. Well less than that. <laughs> so, got, so that's the thing. Like, months. So that's the thing is like everybody has their own experience with like, I guess the puppy dog phase and it's fine. It's fantastic. And, you know, some people do that the rest of their lives, but it, I think it also comes into a clarity feel of, okay, the puppy stage is gone. Now do I see myself with this individual for the rest of my life? And I think some individuals like just like that puppy dog feeling of getting in a relationship and being new and being exciting, doing new things with new individuals that they don't want to take the next step forward because they don't, some, some people are fearful and some people just want to chase the excitement, I guess. I don't know. Some that's... people live on that dopamine rush. That dopamine mm -hmm. rush, that's real. That is a real thing. Yeah, and it's, it is. I, 
I had to learn about it in school. My wife's a therapist. I'm a mental health counselor. I had to learn about that. And it is, it is a drug. It is a strong drug and it keeps on a drive. And once that's gone, people are looking for their next fix, mm -hmm. just like anything else, you know? So it's a very just, real thing. Well, just getting a, po um, a poly relationship. That's all like oh that. yeah. Just constantly yeah. just add a new one in every once in a while, just to keep things yeah, spicy. You know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> situational factors and opportunity. So I had one of my mentors, um, and I hope he sees this because I'm going to clip this. Um, uh, you're, <laughs> it's, it's a fucking wrong, it, it's, it's a wrong saying, but it's absolutely true. It's absolutely fucking true. You're only faithful. You're only faithful. You're only as faithful uh, as your opportunity or in your situation. So, like, with that, it said simply having an opportunity to cheat can make infidelity more likely. This doesn't mean everyone who has the opportunity to cheat will do so. Other factors often, but not always, add to the motivation to cheat. Consider this scenario. You're frustrated with the recent distance in your relationship and dealing with feelings of low self-esteem around your appearance one day a co-worker you become friendly with catches you alone and says i'm really attracted to you let's get together let's get together sometime that happens right? every might, day that. yeah you <laughs> might you might you might not choose to cheat if only one or two factors were involved but this combination of motivation of motivating factors the distance in your relationship, your feeling about your appearance, the attention of your coworker can make infidelity more likely. Potential scenarios. Uh, certain uh, situational factors can also make infidelity more likely, even in a strong, fulfilling relationship, including having a lot to drink and sleeping with someone after a first night. I do not disagree with that. I, I mean, no, I definitely disagree with that because... Um, Alcohol shows your true intentions. It does not, it does not like make you do shit that you don't want to do. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Like, no, that's just that's just my fucking opinion. Like, and I'm being honest, right? Like the saying, like, um, having more money does not change who you are, but it brings out the person that you that you really are. And it's the same way for me with alcohol. Because when I drink, like when I drink, my whole mindset doesn't change. Oh, I'm going to I'm gonna sleep with somebody else or I'm going to sleep with somebody just because I'm drinking. That doesn't, that doesn't change my mindset. Like, and, and for you guys, I know it doesn't change your mindset. Like you still know you have a wife or you have a partner, right? Um, that, doesn't, that doesn't mean, oh, ooh, yeah, I've had drinks. Yeah, I want to go sleep with somebody else. Correct me if I'm wrong. I can't disagree with it. I, <laughs> I can't necessarily disagree with it. I think it does loosen inhibitions a little bit, but I honestly, you know what's still in front of you for the yeah, most part. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And two, two points to that, what you brought up. Um, I'm a firm believer that money does bring happiness. Um, be, facts. facts. It does. Man, because it, does it really happiness. does. Because, I mean, an individual will spend money on stuff even no matter how small it is just to make them happy because it's what they want um the other thing too is if drinking brings out the real person in you does that mean for me alcohol just brings more laziness and sleep yes mm, yes yes <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> fully fully agree, fully agree. <laughs> but, i would like to Oh, go ahead. Go first. Sorry. <laughs> I was just going to uh, kind of back up that statement of what you said, Kevin, as well as you, Rose. Yeah, I, I do agree because like even drinking, it doesn't like if drinking would want would make me want to cheat, then there is a serious issue within me. Exactly. But like that, that, that doesn't like again, just like what you said, Ro, like I'm happy where I'm at. I'm happy with the wife. I'm happy with the kids, like with the drinking. And it's even more fun drinking with her because it loosens her up in a way where she may display a little bit of funny, quirky moments that you don't see on a regular day-to-day -day basis because she is 
wants to maintain, you know, that, that visual aspect that's, that, um, sounds like my wife. (laughs) (laughs) She wants to maintain that, that presence. Right. But give her a little bit of drinks, then, you know, she may pop in like, Hey, pull my finger type situation. Mm -hmm. where you don't get on a daily basis, but it's also more fun because it kind of loosens everybody up. You can joke with one another. I mean, it's just like that whole phrase, like women don't fart and poop. No, women do fart and poop. It may take a couple of drinks in them and they will admit to it, but they do do it. So, yeah, no. Yeah, so like, uh, go ahead. Uh, My wife, just, just a quick, my wife is a very, you've met my wife. She's kind of, you know, what you see is what you get. She's very funny. She's outgoing, but she's also pretty professional. You get a few drinks into her though. And she starts, you know, getting loose and funny and weird. And I was like, honey, I was like, you need to calibrate a little bit. And she's like, okay, calibrate. Boop. Eh, 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 eh. I swear to God. And I'm like, where did this come from? Who is this person? But just to add on to the cheating thing, just real quick. Um, is it easier to cheat nowadays than it ever has been? Quick question. Uh, no. Uh, no. Yeah. It's, that, it's, that, no. See, yeah, no. that's a good question. No. Yeah. Let's it, talk no. about it. It's 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 availability. But it's, why? What is that availability? It, and no, where does that come from? Social, me- social media. There it is. That's what I'm looking t- for. Tinder. Uh, it's like so uh, easy to hit. Yeah, it's it's so no. easy to cheat. You have millions it, of women or men at the at your fingertips no but, but it's, it, it's all it's always been easy to cheat but now it's more common um no what's uh not televised but televised like it's more open like you have so many avenues of getting to what you want then you have then, snapchat where your conversations disappear after you have mm-hmm. them if Hell that's no, not, not just not, a straight, no, wait, no, not not if they put your ass on twenty four hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't there also yeah, yeah. an app too? Going through like the apps thing, didn't they create like an app that you can actually do that? Do what? Because it, well, uh, it they they announced it like a long time ago, and I, I can't remember. It because you, you guys all know the the website like Adam and Eve or whatever. It's the adults, yeah, yeah, yeah adult, adult store or whatever. Yeah, it's the adult yeah. store online and stuff like that. And I thought that they came out with an app for it. I I can't remember. They did. It's it's an Adam and Eve app specifically aimed towards married people to cheat on their spouses. Yes, yep. I remember. I that. mean, no, wait, that's the one. Um, but they also had another one that got um. Uh, all the people like who worked for the government were getting exposed. Um, the Madison, it was like Madison. that's it, that's it. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. I they, mean, they yes. started they started getting exposed because of that whole situation. Yeah, and in all honesty, I guess it's just the old school version of me. Like, and going to the point of like, I guess offensive. Like, no, it doesn't. Um, it, it doesn't really affect, it doesn't affect me at all, but it also kind of offends me at the same time because I know I wouldn't do it. So I guess it's, it, it, it's a human instinct to kind of judge when I shouldn't judge, because if you truly like and enjoy that person and love that person, then, you know, you shouldn't have to do that. But I guess that's the whole point of this conversation so I yeah. guess, I guess, I mean, you can call me hypocritical on what I've said before in the past of trying not to judge people that that's fine, because no matter who you are, you are going to judge at a certain point of time in your life, a Christian, not well, I Christian. Judge. I don't judge. I don't, I don't care. I fully a hundred percent do not care about what people do. I don't like, I woke up this morning and I didn't give a fuck. I had my cup of tea. And I still didn't give a fuck. The tea didn't really make you don't. give a fuck, really? No. I, no, I would have no. expected it would have. I would have been like, oh, tea. No. Oh, I care about things now. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Okay, you have to pee. That's a good stopping yeah. point because within cutting, like I can just easily crop that out. So go for yeah. it. Yeah.
Cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what time is it? Uh, nine. Nine. Did okay. you say you're in Lake City, or are you outside of Gainesville? Where are you again? Davenport. Which is now that's closer to Orlando. That's east or west of Orlando, right? Yes. Okay. So in between Lakeland and Orlando. Okay. Still okay. within Polk County. Okay. I gotcha. So yeah, it's still trying I was to... in Gainesville the other day and I was like, I wonder how close I am to Todd. Like that came across my mind. I was like, how close is Todd to me now? <laughs> uh I wanna say uh well actually you know what i have google maps right here might as well just want me to talk more about the penguins oh jesus um so the city of gainesville specifically is two hours and 11 minutes away fuck okay fair enough i didn't expect that yeah because on the map okay let's see trying to get it to on the map orlando's up here Mm -hmm. then go down and then davenport and then go over tampa okay i got you okay so yeah i mean it's it's close but not too close like whenever um basically whenever we drive anywhere up north and I say Gainesville, I'm like, oh, yeah, awesome. We've made it about four hour drive. And then it hits me that we only dri- have driven for two hours. Like, fuck, we've only driven for two hours. I wasn't super impressed with Gainesville. And I've noticed it's just every city that has a major college in it is not a very impressive city. That's what uh, I've come to. Besides Orlando, though, have you ever been to UCF? No, I've heard of great things about UCF, though. UCF That's one of the is... coolest colleges that I've heard about. It's a city within a city, basically. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's massive. The University of Michigan is pretty cool. I don't know if you ever went up there. Unfortunately, I did not. No, yeah, I wanted I mean, to. I wanted to see a game. I went to a Michigan-Michigan State game, um, and it's just too many people, man. Like, I'm not a small guy by any means, but, like, I still ex- – I could, I could fit where I need to fit, but, like, you had to sit – a, a girl next to me had to sit on my thigh to squeeze herself in with the person next to her as well. And it was just like that all the way down. You were just the whole time. Wow. If you're, if you're sitting down, there's just, it's, it's, it's 107,000 some odd people is it's the big house. Big. I mean, it's awesome. Don't get me wrong. The experience is cool. I'll never do it again. You know, I'm a Michigan fan, but I'll never do it again. I never want to. <laughs> Yeah, I've always wanted to go to the big house and stuff just to check it out. Like every once in a while, like um, I was talking to my mom today and of course her and her side of the family is down here. My dad, his wife and everyone's up there. His side is up there. Um, I was talking to my mom and she was like, you know, I because I, they came down from visiting like maybe a week or two ago mm-hmm. and she was saying on how much she didn't miss it. But at the same time, I'm thinking I'm like, you know, but at the same time, I kind of miss it a little bit just because of the fact of, yeah, you know, I kind of do miss the snow and stuff like that. But I also miss like the seasons and the green of the grass. Like you get green down here. Yeah, sure. But you also have your dry points, which don't get me wrong. Every place is going to have their dry seasons no matter what. But there's just a certain there's just a certain thing that you just can't get down here. Burners. Ginger ale. Oh, <laughs> I mean, besides that, yeah. <laughs> but what can't you get down here that you wish you had up there or down here that you had up there? Uh, first off, just want to throw in that's a halo book right behind you. Yes. What book is that? Uh, that was the first one. Uh, Fall of Reach. Oh okay. no! Yeah, yeah, yeah. One so, the what the first season is slowly becoming? Yeah, essentially. Yeah, yeah. essentially. I'm a huge fan of the books. I love the novels. I think, even though they came off the video game, I thought they did a really good job with the novels themselves. Uh, just above that is also Joe Exotic's Tiger King. So, in case you, 
it's his it's his uh memoirs essentially and it is as crazy as you would think it is um below that is above that is top guns top 10 about, uh, it's about pilots um i don't know if you've heard of uh, guy snodgrass but he was like mm-hmm. the most prolific uh f-14 pilot that there ever was i'm huge in the aviation obviously and then here is uh kevin smith's coffee ta- okay, coffee yeah. table reader i got that it's, it's amazing i don't know if you picked one up or not they had it there no no i bought that about six or seven months ago oh, okay the, the site uh, secret yeah secret stash because it, it just came out it's got his it's got his uh ex, like acceptance letters and like his letters that he wrote into the uh, film school and like how he wrote them and everything it's it's amazing read like wow. he's always been the way he is he's never changed he's always been like this um yeah I, I got all kinds of stuff i got a whole bookshelf of shit too these are just the ones i'm currently reading okay. again yeah. yeah on top of my mini fridge <laughs> Um, and so to the question, cause I know that was off topic. Uh, yeah. I mean, really the big thing is the seasons. Um, and the, and I guess you can kind of have fear up there with like this, the winter months and stuff like that. But at the same time is the fact that, uh, for example, hurricanes, right. I have category five down here. Everybody is going North. Sure. Last time I did that, it was they had the side lanes open for traffic to drive mm-hmm. through. It was a fucking disaster. Um, but up north, if you have like a snow blizzard or let's say politically something happens, yeah, you know, if something bad happens to the point where something comes down from Canada, everybody's hightailing it south. Sure. Unless if you're up at your UP, then you can either go south or east or west. West, yeah. Where down here, you can just go north. Mm-hmm. So I, I guess I'm also looking at it as the fact of, you know, with with the family and stuff like that. Um, I'm looking at more of a location where if there needs to be an escape, I have multiple locations to actually escape to. Rather, one direction where everyone else is going. Because the other thing I was going to mention as far as Top Gun is I love that movie. Both of them. And I've always wanted to be a fighter pilot. And after seeing the Maverick movie, my wife was like, well, you know, you can go ask and listen and stuff. But every single time when I watch it, I think back like, oh, man, I really should have done it. I really should have done that. But I'm glad I didn't because one, I want to have met, you know, Hillary. And then two, if I did it now, I couldn't do it now because of the effect that um, I mean, theoretically, could I do it? Yeah. You know, the schooling, the ASVAB, the the running yeah not a problem whatever it's all mind over matter type situation but the the thought process of like for example what they do in the old movie or the new movie they go on a mission and the likelihood of coming back is like extremely slim Mm -hmm. so knowing to go on that type of mission which is you know common like there are missions where you know there may not be coming back from it and just the thought process of, you know, my last mission, seeing the family for the last time, like mentally, I, I, I couldn't do that because I don't want to leave them behind type situation. So that that part's kind of hard. So what you're saying is you're not hero material. As far Ooh. as like, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but but that is um, a good that is a good moment because of the fact that when it comes to family, when it comes to kids, like if mm. something happens, like if there's a car coming and a kid is right there, then yes, absolutely. Within a blink of a hat, I'll go ahead and stop and push the kid out of the way. If I get hit, I get hit. Um, but that's my mm. choice, right? That's my choice of sacrificing myself for a kid or sacrificing myself for the family versus being on a mission. And there, I don't have any say towards it. I don't think Would I like kids should, enough. What? <laughs> same same ah, fucking same would you shoot a kid in the head if they had a gun See, who's this pointed to like what, what anybody what's the, situ- what's the situation you. so like in afghanistan i walked around right those kids were guns. sometimes sure. they pointed at you sometimes they won't would you mm-hmm. shoot a kid if they had a gun pointed at you 
I don't think a kid would change my mindset on trying to save my own life. If that's facts. what you're asking. No facts. Like, my my uh, I, buddy was a Marine sniper and he talks about, we talk about stuff like that in his podcast all the time. I, I, I tell people all the time. I'd shoot a fucking kid like square in the head. If, his, if he was pointing a rocket launcher at me or some shit without a fucking, without a fucking doubt in my mind. See, this took a deep, dark turn, didn't it? Did. <laughs> it did. It did. See, see mer- personally, I couldn't. It, it's it's hard for me, personally. Hey, hey, your life or their life? You go home or they go home? Yeah, and see, that's. You go home or they go home? I'm shooting that fucking kid. I'm telling you that right now. Square in the head. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> hey, and we're and we're top two. Two to the head. Uh, no, two to the body, one to the head. No double tap? That's a triple tap. Two to the body, one to the head. This yeah. Uh, if they go down <laughs> with the two to the body, you walk over their body, shoot them in the head. No, I'm yeah. talking about like zombie land. It's uh, man. Uh, double tap. He says you can't ever take uh, a shit in that movie either. So, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, you can't. All right. You guys ready uh, to uh, continue? I believe Ro yeah, was talking. Uh, uh, give me a second. Um, all we have left is um, for me to say the last um, four, which is commitment issues, other reasons for having commi- uh, commitment related infidelity, um, unmet needs, sexual desires, wanting variety, and low self esteem. Okay. So. All right, so starting, and I'm only doing this because it helps with the cutting. So then that with way, the I know when, yeah. yeah, when mm-hmm. I know when to start and stop. Uh, so it's three, two, go. What? Uh, yeah. So the other four reasons uh, were commitment issues. People who have a hard time with the commitment may be more likely to cheat in some cases. Plus, commitment doesn't mean the same thing to everyone in that case i say why don't you have why don't you be single or have an open relationship with somebody who's on the same page like if it's possible for two people in a relationship to have very different ideas about the relationship status such as whether it's casual exclusive and so on that's where communication that's where communication comes in yeah. Like, Why knowingly this, get into that relationship knowing you're going to break this person's heart type of thing? Yeah. yeah. Why do that? But, but the thing is, right, that that's actually skipped into one of the other ones um, saying wanting variety, like, um, or um, sexual desire, which is six and seven. I skipped number five, but sexual desire um can motivate someone to cheat or wanting variety like if you want variety why get into a monogamous relationship why get into yeah why get into a monogamous relationship just get into a poly relationship or an open relationship or just be fucking single because that's your that's your variety right there but like because i guarantee you there will always be someone who does not want a relationship. There will always be someone who don't want a relationship, whether it's even if it's an open relationship. If you don't, if you don't want the status of a relationship, don't get in one. Right. Uh, but the thing is, also, a lot of people are not confrontational. Right. So. A lot of people won't say, like, no, I don't want a relationship. Because the person may be into them more than you're into them, right? Like, so, and a lot of people can't handle saying, you know, um, afraid of giving rejection or getting rejection. So a lot of people can't handle that situation. And it's something that people have to learn, which is, I mean, okay, I guess. But, like, communication is... Communication and understanding are very hard. That's fair. As, as, yeah, as 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 much as people, you know, guys and women say that um, all you have to do is communicate. All you have to do is communicate. Just tell me what you want. 
it's not it's not easy it's really not because what does communication come with emotion right emotion. and fear Especially of what the other person's going to say might say and and that relates to um trauma you working in into uh in the mental health uh sector kevin like trauma like pa- um past trauma from when you were younger whether it be like you talk um telling your um your parents something and they reacted a certain type of way or like you being in other relationships and they when you've told them like this is what you want or like you don't agree with this how they reacted can cause a certain type of trauma and you're like damn like i don't want to say something that um offends or makes the other person mad so you're reluctant to being open with with the person that you're with yeah you 100% spot on on that 100% mm-hmm. absolutely mm-hmm. And um, unmet needs, which was which was number five. Um, sometimes one or both partner partners' needs for intimacy go unmet in a relationship. Many people choose to stay in a relationship, often hoping things will improve, especially if the relationship is otherwise fulfilling. But unmet needs can lead to frustration, which might worsen if the situation doesn't improve. This can provide motivation to get those needs met somewhere else unmet sexual relationship needs might happen when partners have different sex drives so if her sex drive is higher than yours or if hers is um or if yours is higher than hers one partner can't have sex or doesn't have interest in having sex uh one or both partners often spend time away from home uh, um which i think is a is a big thing like when on uh, like for guys in the military or women in the military when they go on deployment and their um partners stay back that's a big um big issue or like if your your partner travels from one place to another for work um that's a big thing but those are like um i had a one one buddy of one buddy of mine who um told me i'm not going to say his name um he told me whenever his wife like or if his wife were to go away um he wouldn't want to know what she does when she's out there just don't bring it home right which i told which me like okay not everybody agrees with right but me personally i agreed exactly with what he's saying right like if you go out like that need everybody has those needs right you you go out you go she goes somewhere for a year a year and a half right how how well right is masturbating going to do for you for a year a year and a half plenty of people I, do it all the time yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll, it, I'll have to ask my high school self yeah <laughs> yeah yeah right I but mean, here's I the mean, thing you get into this relationship with this person that's in the military right you it's expected. You would have to be ignorant to not know what you're getting yourself into right. and the possibilities of that. So now you got to put yourself in the position of now, do you want to put yourself in that position? So I, I see what you're saying and I understand it. I, you know, all I'm going to, all I'm going to say when it comes to um, those situations, people who marry young, um, one of my mentors, He's never been married, and he's been in at least 19, 20 years. Mm-hmm. He's never been married, never uh, doesn't have any kids or anything like that, right? Um, but it's like when when they're 19, 20, 21 even, um, maybe 22, right? Because the, the averages of um, the infidelities in the military are – from 21 to 25 uh well 18 to 25 Makes right sense. Uh, yeah um so it's like 
everybody's getting married for the benefits. I don't give a fuck what nobody says. Everybody's getting married for the benefits. Like you get an extra boost on your paycheck. You don't have to live in the in the um, barracks. You don't have to like deal with any of the, any of that. And like, yo, you're young. You don't even know what you fully want. Like you're per and especially if you're you let's say you got married before boot camp or you got married right after boot camp, right? You still have basic um you still have mct or sai to go to and you still have your your school to go to which is depending on your school right the most school can last up to a year right so that's an extra mct is an extra month soi i think is up to like a month or two months and then whatever school you decide to go to right like your your mos your your job is you have to go to that. So that's roughly another year, right? Roughly another year before you're seeing, you're seeing your other person before you decide to go, before you get sent to your first duty station. What do you think, what do you think is going on for the whole another year at the age of 19, right? She's, she's thinking about me and only me 100% of the time. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> right um but it's like it's like those those factors weigh have weigh heavily on on that time like they're gone like i think a 19 year 19 to 25 year old sex drive is way higher than a 26 and up right no matter how high your sex drive is already I think at that age, like your sex drive is like, like you like that firecracker and that, that thing is just going. I don't know. I have to talk to my high school and college self again. <laughs> my sex drive went through the roof after my divorce. I was anything, everything, all the time, my- whatever, four years straight. It was, my, my, it was amazing my, and miserable at the same time. My mine has always been been high, um, but we won't get into that. <laughs> no, I would like to get into that, bro. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, my mine, mine. Uh, like for me, it's minimum three times a day. Got like, if if you're with me, it's minimum three times a day. You are a project. <laughs> you... <laughs> I need to be studied. <laughs> oh my god! No, nah, for me, like three times a day minimum. How how old are you? I'm 32. Oh, you're my age, man. What are you doing? A minimum three times. Fucking a day. get a hobby, build a birdhouse, something. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh and my god! Is, wait, no, but the thing is, I do have a ho- I like I do have hobbies, right? But like, like. I this past two months I went from two hundred pounds to two twenty seven. Mm-hmm. Vulcan, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah, I'm trying yeah, to get yeah. two fifty, baby. Um, <laughs> but but that but I mean like but my sex drive has always always been fucking high. Like three times a day minimum. Minimum. Like, minimum. That means you could go more. Yes. Fuck. You can keep it. I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want that. I think about exercise. <laughs> like, is that what you do? It, is, it, is that what car- it is? That's, that's your cardio. cardio for the day? That's my cardio. You're just in there. You're like, oh, fuck, I'm burning so many calories right <laughs> now. Yeah. Oh, my God. But, I mean, in, in that in that kind of defense, though, it it's kind of true because, I mean – Look at how fit Roe is compared to like me, for an example. I'm 220 and it's not by muscle at all. It's by other substances that kind of just accumulate from eating too many cosmic brownies. We are not going to sit here and say that that motherfucker is in shape because he is plowing three times a day. There is no way we're getting into that. No, no, no. No, no, I'm, I'm saying like because because it's apparently been true as far as statistics go that you have a higher uh 
libido you have a higher everything once you kind of in my circumstance cut out the cosmic brownies or the honey buns and like the soda and stuff like that don't get me wrong those things are delicious so that's yeah, not going in the way i i i work out i work out every day except the weekends usually um some some days i'll get in my workout like saturday or sunday depending but monday through friday i'm in the gym like i'm working out right and then like um I'm starting two a days on Mondays, so you can imagine like I'm I'm going full beast mode. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be summer ready. You feel me? Like it's you. You've, I, you I know are summer you. ready, bro. You are summer I'm, ready. I'm not. I'm not. You're just I'm trying ready. to make me fucking look bad now, and that's what I'm feeling like. <laughs> yeah, I'm really. See, there not. it is. There <laughs> it is. There's the reason why women cheat. It's Ro. And why men cheat? Right here. Because he's making us feel bad about that. Yeah. So. Okay, uh, okay. So look, the 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 girl that um I'm in an open relationship with, right? Um, she. Did you guys pause? You guys froze on my screen. I don't know what's going on. No, you're you're fine on mine. Okay. All right. No, you guys pause for a quick second. Um, but, um, so the girl that I'm in an open relationship with. She gets very upset, like, because we go out and I get hit on by guys and girls. They're like, yo, you fucking look great, man. Or like, like, oh, shit, like, yo, you're fucking hot. Or like girls come up to me while she's there. It's not like she's walked away and like the they come up and hit on me. <laughs> they hit on me like while she's there. And it's like. I mean, it feels good. Yeah, of course, a hundred percent. It feels good, but you know, I'm I'm trying to be two fifty, walking around just like, babe, scratch my back real quick, or like have somebody else scratch scratch my back, you know. But so I, then, I, I love it. In, in other words, like we're basically, if we're gonna put it in the context, uh, we're like Tom from Tom and Jerry. And then here comes Anders, uh, here comes Ro with his big old bulky bulldog body, like walking around. Yeah, exactly. Let's to be fair though, that bulldog gets made out to look like a bitch quite often. No offense, Ro. <laughs> 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 hey, I'm, I'm just I'm saying try, I'm trying to be like a black Thor around here. You feel me? Just, hey, just out there name? smashing what? glasses. Uh, Another just all uh, the time. Uh, yeah, what's his uh the guy who plays Thor, Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, Hemsworth. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to, you know, be the black version of Chris Hemsworth, like just walking around, like. Hey, y'all gonna have to. to be honest, you guys are gonna... uncomfortable just walking around like this all the time. <laughs> nah, but like, you guys are gonna have to replace your door because I can't walk in like like a normal person. I have yeah. to turn. Well, sideways. you're gonna pay for that door. <laughs> yeah, dude. No, I won't. No. I yeah. Won't. <laughs> I'm going to call the inspectors and tell them your door is not wide enough. Like, how about we talk about that? Yeah, and then we'll get the uh, the steroid police and say, there's something going on here. That doesn't seem right. Hey, there's no steroids. This is, two, <laughs> this, this is 220, 65 pounds. You feel me? Yeah, me too. Yeah, me, me yeah, too. All, all of us. Yeah. Look at me yeah. go. <laughs> my body don't jiggle jiggle <laughs> yeah it does <laughs> mine does too <laughs> <laughs> oh but the last one um is low self-esteem yeah i i can i can see that is um, that interesting though when you think about it low self-esteem but you're still going out and wanting to cheat on somebody Think of think right. about that though. Yeah, like no, you no. where does the self-esteem come from for cheating? Well, somebody? is it is it really low self-esteem or does it also have some narcissism to play in with that? Yeah, to. Okay, so so the 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 other reasoning with, with that it says like low self-esteem, right? Is the main main subject title. And it says wanting a boost to self-esteem can also motivate infidelity. Um your your self-esteem is already pretty high if you're cheating for a boost 
to self-esteem. Um, having sex with a person, with a new person can lead, uh, lead to positive feelings. You might feel empowered, attractive, confident, or successful. These feelings can build up your self-esteem. Um, so I, I will make a comment and it goes back to uh, the original description that started kind of started this off. Uh, in my personal experience, before I met my wife and when I actually did that only once, all that's false. In my personal experience, fear, guilt, and everything negative that came with it is that made me feel bad. So just crying and while you're on top. <laughs> You, yeah. You, See, you what ended up happening that night is what Ro won't actually admit. And what ended up happening is when that happened and she went home, I ended up crying on his shoulder. Meanwhile, I'm not laughing at it. <laughs> while eating a falafel. Hey, 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 I told him, I told him there are plenty of fishes in the sea. I should know they call me Aquaman. That's all. I oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> More like Aqua Lad. <laughs> you know who yeah. isn't having to cheat because of his ego and his content is, is, is for your for your boost. You you don't have to. You have plenty of self esteem. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you damn right. Uh, what, I need to, what I need to cheat for? There ain't no reason to cheat. Um, many um, and the excuses for that the low self esteem. Many people who cheat because of self esteem issues. Have loving support, uh, supportive partners who offer compassion and encouragement, but they might think <sighs> they have to say that, or they just don't want me to feel bad. Yeah, that's how it goes. No, Janice, you just don't get it. it he said it was his last time. It, he said he wouldn't do it again. And. Not to pick on Steph Curry's wife, right? <laughs> but we're going to pick we all... on his wife. No, no. It's cause, okay. Because we've heard when she wanted attention from other men, like, you know, back in, uh, back a couple of years back, it was like receiving an, um, admiration and approval from someone new and, uh, and all, I'm sorry. Receiving admiration and approval from someone new, on the other hand, can seem different and exciting. It may seem more genuine to someone with low self-esteem who might assume that the new person has no relationship obligation to lie or exaggerate. It's that closeness to the situation thing is what we're talking Mm -hmm. about here. Yeah. Yep. So I wonder if uh, Tiger Woods or Arnold Schwarzenegger had any of those feelings. Ooh, I'm sure she told him she told him he was small. <laughs> Damn. She Arnold, you you looking you pretty small, today? bro. Yeah. Hey, did you hit the gym today, babe? Like cuz you're not you're really not um you're not giving. Well, I know who was giving to uh Tiger. His wife with that club. That's what oh, she was giving. God. Yeah, she gave him the hey, 900 okay. right back. Okay, wait. Okay, look. All right. So, I'm not going to lie, right? So the girl who um, came out and said that she cheated for attention, right? I'm not going to lie. If Oprah Winfrey was married, right, and I was her side dude, and she told me, I'll pay you $15 million not to say shit, I ain't saying shit. But you just admitted to it. Nope. Do you this know is, who Oprah this Winfrey hypoth- is? That's hypothetical. Yeah. Do you know who Oprah Winfrey is? No, nah, I know she got a TV show. Like, that's all yeah. I know. I ain't, I ain't never been to her house. I don't know what her house looked like. She gives free here? stuff away. Yeah. yeah that, that's all I know about Oprah Winfrey. Like, she that girl saying, you, you get a car. You get a car. Everybody gets yeah, a car. Yeah, right. Like, and nope, Megan Good. Jesus. But at this point with the economy, it's more like you get baby formula and you get baby formula. <laughs> hey, I ain't got no kids, so I need baby formula. Okay, fine. You get toilet paper and you get toilet paper. 
I use baby wipes. We going back to that? Oh yeah, I I use uh I use dude wipes. You ever seen those? They're actually meant no. for men. Yeah, so you know you you use stuff with the toilet paper and it's a it's a, like a cologne scented uh, wipe Ooh. afterwards. Yeah, dude, it's nice. Ooh. Yeah, dude, I like a clean butthole. I'm just gonna say it. I do. Oh yeah, enjoy fine. that. Yeah, yeah, dude. That smells like I mean, what no, cedar I mean, wood. Yeah, yeah, dude. I don't. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, sweat no. too much not to be careful with a baby wipe. I I, I do. I sweat too much. Can't happen. <laughs> so what's that smell it smells like alpine and cedar wood oh i farted (laughs) (laughs) oh shit that's funny hey uh, oh go ahead no 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 no. i was just uh go 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 ahead now finish your finish your last point no i just didn't know if uh so basically i guess the the real question is 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 it more common and more acceptable for men to cheat or is it more of all around everybody does it and it shouldn't just be one, one gender? No, it's, um, I would say it's, bo- it's, it's been more televised for men to be caught cheating or in cheating situations than it is women. And it's become a history of of since a lot of guys have been caught more for cheating um, than than women. So I mean, this study doesn't show like two women in relationships, right? So are you going to say the man cheats more, or the guy, uh, the the girl who's playing the man role is cheating more? Right or it if it's two uh, males together, are we saying the the person who's playing the male role is cheating more, or the male who's playing female? So like, and this this was a a study from two thousand seventeen, right? So well, um, actually there was one part of the study. That was uh, from 2017. So, you know, I I think a lot of a lot has changed since then. Um, besides COVID, uh, <laughs> um, and monkeypox, but that that's another subject for another day. Um, Kevin, what do you think? Final thoughts? Final thoughts. I think it's <laughs> a lot closer to 50-50 than what that statistic is showing. Um, I, I believe that men are more willing to admit that they've cheated than a woman is. And I, and uh, you know, I, I, I don't think people are people, man. I, I, I work with people consistently every day on a very close level. Um, if you want to go heavy into it, you could even go into the fact of when he was talking about men and men, women and women, um, there's a huge, huge discrepancy of cheating within the homosexual community. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's very rampant. So um, I think it's just a problem in general, but is, you know, I, I don't think it, it is a sexist thing. I think it's just a thing that happens. So that's my final. You, see, yep. you give it 50, 50. You yeah. 50, 50. Yeah. I, I, I say women are um, not all women, but like, they're better at it, so I'd give them fifty-two percent. That's just me. <laughs> so, I, I guess for my final thoughts is, you know, me personally, there are those who cheat. Yes, um, I've learned my lesson very early within my adulthood um, that I want to do it again. Um, and I guess for those individuals there are some men and women that still do it that does like what we've talked about kind of want that thrill in their life want a new puppy dog stage they they have low self-esteem there's other situations as well that you know we may not know um so as far as statistics go and everything like that i i personally feel like it depends on the individual again i do feel like just like you guys have said uh, you know, there are more accounts of men cheating than there are of women because it just doesn't, you know, come out as often. Um, but regardless, 
I, I can't, it, it's kind of hard because personally, I feel like it's wrong, but also you don't know the individual. Um, so though, that's, that's my thoughts on it. Yeah. Thoughts. Thoughts. All right. Well, Hey, it was a, definitely a great show. Um, today, all the viewers who, who seen this or will see this, um, hope we didn't please, lose you. Um, click, please click that um, follow button. There will be snippets on um, Instagram, my Instagram, um, Cavalier Family's Instagram, uh, maybe Kevin's Instagram. But um, it was a pleasure for you guys to be be with us today and um, you know listen to our our thoughts about um, about the whole cheating you know perspective um and thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time on let's talk about it